This is going to be a screencast um, to show you how to use uh, text size. Uh, text size is a taxonomic uh, tool belt for R. Um, currently, text size interacts with um, about 13 different data sources on the web. Um, and uh, so, this is, we believe, this is probably a very common use case for most scientists that, that um, in terms of having to deal with taxonomic names, you know, no matter sort of what you're doing, uh, you're likely dealing with uh, some kind of species um, that has a, you know, taxonomic names associated with it. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is install taxize using the install packages command. And once that is done, we can uh, load taxize into the session. So one of the things we can do is uh, get taxonomic identifiers. So there's a variety of sources we can get identifiers from. But a, a function uh, that we have called getIDs tries to um, interact with many different uh, data sources. So we can just feed getIDs a name. So let's say Helianthus annuus, or the uh, common sunflower. And we can specify the database. So here we want to use uh, NCBI. So there we go. We get a... Um, identifier 4232, um, and also you can feed in, this is a vectorized function, so you can feed in uh, a vector of names, so here we want Helianthus annuus and uh, Poa annua. Now we have to uh, specify the, the database, uh, let's say NCBI, and there we go. Uh, so another thing you might often want to do is get a taxonomic hierarchy. So we have a, a function called a classification um, where you can feed a uh, taxonomic name. So let's say Helianthus annuus from NCBI and we get a, a taxonomic hierarchy. Another thing uh, you can do for classification is pass in um, the actual ID. So we can say get um, get IDs Helianthus annuus GB and CBI, and that will get the taxonomic identifier for NCBI for that species, and then go get the taxonomic hierarchy. Another thing we can do is uh, check taxonomic names. Um, so so let's say um, you have a vector of names here, and we can call this uh, my names. And there's a function called TNRS. And so let's assign the output to an object called out. Um, so we're going to pass in our um, list of names. And we're going to want to specify the source as uh, iPlant. And so that's going to call out to this um, URL here. And it's going to grab uh, information. And so let's just look at um, the first first uh, five columns of that. So here's our submitted name, Helianthus annuus polonia pinus contort. These are all notice that these are all spelled incorrectly. And then we have our accepted names, our, our sort of cleaned up names. Another thing we can do is check um, name synonyms. Um, so this function um, takes in a single name or a list of names. So let's feed it uh, Poa annua, Pinus contorta, and Puma concolor. And then we're going to tell it we want to use itis. So it's going to go out and retrieve uh, synonyms for those names. And there we go. So Poet Annua has a series of synonyms associated with it. Uh, Pinus contorta, we didn't find any synonyms. And uh, Puma concolor, we had a synonym of Felis uh, concolor. Another interesting thing you can do is um, get names downstream. So we have a variety of um, sources that you can do that with. One of them is uh, Catalog of Life or Coal downstream. Um, so here we can feed that a name, so here we'll feed it the genus Apis, this is the genus that honeybees are in, and then we want to go down to a specific taxonomic level, uh, and that will be um, species in this case. So there it just went out to the catalog of life 
uh, database and checked um, what species are in uh, APIS, and then we have a series of seven species along with their associated IDs um, and rank. Uh, 